So I'm not sure if that Camp Lejeune, not Camp Lejeune, 29 Palms video will be long enough. So let's get on to another story, and uh, and this will tell you the, the stupidity sometimes of the command structure in the uh, in the military. So <clears throat> so here we are, and uh, we're riding along in formation, and uh, this particular commander had brought our track right up into the middle of the formation, full of explosives. Now that's uh, that's actually against regulations, and it's a very stupid thing to do. And this will be a, a, a sample story of how stupid that really was. So the desert, you know, unlike what you see on TV with the Sierra Desert that goes on for miles and is nice and flat, Mojave's not like that. It's a very, very rough place. I mean, there's huge ditches, and so the tr those tracks, man, they take a beating. You you're going up and down and sideways. I mean, it's like being on a uh, one of those amusement rides just getting banged all over the place, you know, and then you're you're trying to sit and you know You got a whole squad in one of them tracks that, You know, you got guys on both sides and, uh, and on the on the walls are these big racks that will You know if you unfasten them, they'll swing out with all the gear on them So it makes it a little easier to get your gear off of them, but that's where you store all your stuff when you're riding along and uh, So anyway, on this particular day, you know, I don't know what the, the guy was driving the track was thinking about but he he hit a ditch or something I mean it was a huge blow to the track and what happened was that uh, one of those arms that had all the gear on it came loose and that sucker swung around you know just like on a sailboat you know the boom came flying around and uh, you know the guys on the other side ducked and boy and you know what you have on uh, to for, for your explosives is a blasting cap box it's all uh, it's painted red and in there you store all your blasting caps in there and yeah, you know, it's a nice little foam rubber uh, uh, thing, you know, to, to keep those blasting caps separated and, and, and protected, you know, because you don't want anything coming in contact with them uh, until you're ready to use them. Well, that thing, <laughs> I don't know how, what in the world, you know, but it was perfectly positioned like a baseball bat and hit that doggone uh, red container holding the blasting caps and knocked it right off the the wall of the track like a foot you know like like you hit a, a home run with a baseball that blasting cap box flew up to the front of the track hit the front of the track and bust it open and the blasting caps actually just spewed out of it all over the track so now you know the tracks going all over the place and you know it's loud those engines are loud and uh, everybody on the track is screaming stop 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 please god stop the track because now we've got blasting caps rolling around with the explosives on the floor of the track because you know a lot of those explosives we didn't secure them you know you just lay them in the floor and uh because you know those bangalore torpedoes they weigh weigh a lot i mean how are you going to secure them to the side of the track so all that stuff's just rolling around together i don't remember how long it took before we finally got to the driver and got him to stop the track but i bet i was uh, i was ghost white i've never been so scared in my life and uh if that track had gone up uh, in an explosion. Well, number one, there wouldn't have been anything left to bury. That's for sure. I, they could have just put a little uh, <laughs> little leaf in the ground and said, "Hey, this is what's left of Kirk Ellis." But uh, the other thing was, we would have taken out that entire formation. Uh, so hundreds of Marines would have died that day had that uh, track exploded. And uh, like I said, in the in the desert, you've got plenty of heat. So that was one variable. And the pressure, you know, you can take one of those blasting caps and just throw it up against the wall and it'll explode. And so to this day, I guess there must have been a guardian angel there. I can't explain why those blasting caps didn't explode. You know, especially when they were rolling around with the, with the Bangalore torpedoes on the bottom, you know, banging into everything. And plus, or when they hit the, the front wall of the track and busted out of that red box. So uh, definitely the good Lord was looking out for it. Uh, that's just one one more story. I'm going to kind of just record it one story at a time and that way I can adjust the length of the uh, of the 29 palms uh, video here. All right, peace out. All right, getting on. Try to get a little selfie before each story, you know. <laughs> so we're getting on to the next story. Uh, one of the things about the desert is, uh, you know, when, when you're out there with no air conditioning and rolling around in tracks and blowing things up and shooting things and you know it's just a never-ending day and you're moving from you know the from when the sun comes up to basically the sun goes down and uh so this particular day you know what what happened to me is 
the heat would just drain me, you know, and I could fall asleep just about anywhere, you know. I, a lot of time, hell, I slept on the floor of that track with a Bangalore torpedoes rolling around all around me, you know, and everybody would laugh at me, but I just, boy, I just get sleepy and just screw it, man, just lay down. And uh, so um, one particular day, we were just hanging out, and uh, the tanks were there with us, the M60 tanks, back in the day before the M1s, you know. And uh, so I, I laid on the ground, and I fell asleep. You know, I just kind of waiting for somebody to wake me up and tell us we're moving out. Well, you know, I could kind of, you know, you're kind of coming out of your sleep and, you know, you can hear everybody laughing and, you know, and, and I'm wondering what the hell's going on. And when I woke up, what the idiots had decided they wanted to play a game, they were going to roll a tank over top of me. <laughs> they wanted to see if I would wake up as the tank, you know, rolled over top of me. And, uh, well, you know, there's a little bit of danger in that scenario, uh, you know, because... You know, of course, I'm going in between the treads. I mean, if the treads rolled over me, I'd be a squashed bug. But no, so, I, you know, they, they centered that tank up real well. And so when I woke up, the tank was about over three quarters of my body. I mean, the, of course, the, 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 the barrel was way out in, over here. And, you know, they were going nice and slow. I'll give them credit. They were trying to be as cautious as they could. But, you know, I freaked out, man. <laughs> because, you know, when you look, when you wake up and you see the bottom of a tank on top of you, you know, I just, so I, you know, I immediately rolled. And luckily I didn't get, you know, because I rolled right into the tread. And, uh, you know, it was still moving. And uh, anyway, I got the hell out from underneath there. And they, they thought that was real funny. But uh, I didn't think it was funny. I thought that was a pretty dangerous thing to do. But uh, like I said, I mean, it was just creeping along. The, the, the odds of me getting something stuck in that tread or, or you know, it, or it rolling on to me was pretty, pretty low. And looking back, it was a good story. So that was, uh, that was that story. So we'll cut it off right there. That's, that's my next 29 Palm story. All right. The next story. 29 Palms again. So, uh, you know, one of the things the military is incredibly stupid about, and they've gotten smarter, was back then we had to wear the stupid uh, green camouflage uh, in the desert. And uh, when that sun, you know, like that day when they, they tried to roll the tank over me, uh, what happened was my pants had gotten so hot, I actually got a mild uh, first degree burn just from the cloth touching my skin. You know, there's a reason that the Arabs, you know, wear the, uh, the, the hats on top of their head that it covers up their neck. And then they also, uh, uh, you know, they, they wear white, not dark green uniforms. This is how stupid the military is. And then we had those stupid uh, baseball caps. So the back of your neck would just get baked constantly. I, you know, I gotta, I'm gonna have to go to a term of dermatologist and get checked for skin cancer at some point, you know, cause uh, I mean, I, so you, your neck would just turn beet red cause it had no protection and you're out there in that sun just, just bakes the hell out of you. So, uh, you know, so I'm getting back to the, the, the crux of the story. So um, this particular day, uh, we were, um, we're out in the middle of the desert and, uh, we, you know, we're, we're out there and we were uh, unloading the uh, Bangalore torpedoes from the back of a deuce and half. Now those deuce and half, that's, that's, those, uh, that's a good long ways above the ground. You're, you're looking at about six foot drop, I'd say. Well, anyway, you know, everybody's tired, it's hot. And uh, one of the guys uh, slipped. And the, uh, the whole box of Bangalore torpedoes, they just dropped it right off the back of that deuce and half. And it hit the ground. And you, everybody was standing right there. And you wouldn't, nobody, I mean, you couldn't have heard a pin drop. Because everybody in that moment was just silent. You know, like, holy moly, did we just see that happen. Once again, the explosives, you know, all it takes is pressure and heat. And you got heat. And those Bangalores hitting the ground, that's pressure. So thank God, once again, the guardian angel was there uh, and preserved us. And if, obviously if they'd exploded, uh, it would have been nothing but dust left. So uh, anyway, I, you know, everybody deals with uh, uh, a trauma a different way. And I just burst out laughing. I was so thankful to be alive. I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy moly, Here comes a guy jogging. And uh, it was just a... It was a happy moment. I'm thinking, man, we could all be dead. 
and <laughs> Mayo got pissed off again. He started hitting me in the head with his with his fist. He says, "You stupid son of a gun." He says, "That ain't funny, man." He says, "What are you laughing at?" That's just, you. Know, I said, "I'm just happy to be alive, Sarge." I mean, geez, what the hell? <laughs> he, so what they did for his punishment, uh, and I can't remember what the other guy did. He he did something, and so they they left us out there because they were going back. I think I'm on been going back to pick up supplies I can't I don't think it was to get a shower but they were going to drive into the, um, the the area and then come back out and get us okay so they left us out there as gear guards in the middle of the desert to guard the uh, explosives like like you really needed that <laughs> who's, who's going to go out into the middle of the ocean I mean, the middle of the desert and uh, steal a bunch of explosives you know from from a spot that they they've picked out to put the explosives at so anyway, uh, so we're out there and, you know, you look, this is my first, uh, my first sandstorm. I'd never been in a sandstorm before and uh, I didn't know what to expect. And so you look off in the distance and uh, you just see that, uh, sorry, I'm moving the weight around. You see this, uh, just a, it's just a, a blank cloud. You know, it's, it's just this huge uh, brown dust wall. It looks like a wall coming at you. You know that movie, The Fog. It's exactly what it looks like. It looks like a fog rolling towards you, and you're thinking, "My God, you know, I, I guess that's a, that must be a sandstorm." And so, you know, me and this guy, we there, there was no shelter, and uh, they we had put up these little uh, uh, makeshift, um, I don't know, shelter halves, you know, and kind of staked them up so for shade. And uh, so we just we got behind a berm and got underneath those as best we could, and man, that sandstorm hit. And if you've ever been in a sandstorm, it's uh, it'll blast the skin right off your body. I mean, it's it's that intense, that wind, and it sounds like a freight train going by. I mean, and uh, we had no and see once again the gear, we had no protection. So luckily, you know, I had a bunch of bandanas, and I wrapped those bandanas around my face, around my my skin, I wrapped it around my uh, uh, my hands. You know, I because I, you had to cover everything. And that berm wasn't giving us much protection. And uh, so it was it was intense. And I don't know how long it lasted, but that was ingrained in my memory. So when I went to Kuwait, I was ready for, for what the desert, you know, was all about. And I brought all the stuff with me that I would need because right there, just a dust mask alone in that sandstorm would have really been, because been, even breathing through a bandana is not very good with the amount of dust. And oh, by the way, it's pretty painful. You know, when the wind's blowing that hard, uh, it picks up all of that loose debris in the desert. And so that was just pummeling us through our uniforms, just beating us. I mean, it was, it was brutal. And uh, I'll never forget that as long as I live. And uh, obviously we survived it, but uh, we were, we looked like, <laughs> you know, in the in the movies when the when the actors have been in one of those huge explosions and they got the drywall dust all over them after <laughs> after the explosion. That's exactly what we looked like. I mean, I'm sitting there. I do, all you could do is just strip down, take everything off, and just beat the dust out of your clothes because that stuff just blasts right into the the clothes and everything. But anyway, that's 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 another. Mojave Desert story. All right, final story of the day. This is a pretty good one, pretty short, really. Uh, anyway, we got we got well. That's actually this, there's a couple more stories. I'll just get this one out. Well, we got lost and uh, our track, and uh, we ended up with uh, the Army guys. And uh, there's no love lost between Marines and Army grunts, you know. And uh, so these guys, uh, let's just whip around. And, I, get, I came back too early. I could have stayed out longer. But uh, so, you know, that night we didn't have any um, any gear. And, you know, believe it or not, it's 140 during the day. But at night, the desert can get really, really cold. And this particular night, I, I don't know what the temperature went down to. And all we had to sleep with, because like all our gear was gone. I mean, we, it was on another track somewhere. And we don't know, you know, because it, it's chaotic. You know, when, you, when you're fight, doing a live fire exercise with a couple of divisions, it's chaos, you know. And that, that's probably this particular day we'd gone up ahead to blow a breach, and so we lost everybody. So we were going to bed down with the Army guys. And those guys, uh, they're like, you know, good luck, man. They wouldn't give us anything. So all we had was basically a, a poncho and a shelter half to sleep under that night. 
and you're, you're not supposed to sleep on the track vehicles and uh, I'll get to another story later this will be my last story today uh, of, of sleeping on the track and uh, but you know, being with the army guys we certainly weren't going to be allowed to sleep on the track so uh, so we bedded down and it got so cold that night there was three of us and I know this is going to sound kind of kind of uh, home, homophobic here but I mean the three of us to keep each other warm what we would do is two of us would climb on top of one guy and uh, rub him to try to, to try to warm him up because we were we were going to get hypothermia and, uh, and and we would switch positions you know and no sleep at all that night it was so cold I never never I mean I've there's been other instances where I've been that cold but not for a whole night long and uh, we just shivered and shook all night I'll never forget the next day when that sun came up I've never been so thankful to see the sun and, and the temperature started warming up and uh, none of us had any frostbite thank goodness but it sure did feel like we should have and uh, I just, I'll never forget them damn army guys you know you you guys are on your own they wouldn't even give us a you know if we just had one sleeping bag to put over the three of us that would have helped out quite a bit uh, but you know maybe you know maybe they didn't have any extra gear I don't know I just remember they weren't going to give us a damn thing if they certainly could have given us their ponchos and shelter hats you know if we could have doubled up with three or four ponchos and maybe three or four shelter hats that would have given us a lot more protection than just one poncho and one one shelter half and all right final story of today and uh we'll get get on to some some other ones uh later on i uh, didn't there's just so many but uh that's why i'm making these videos i'm having fun so i'm jumping forward with this story so i'll probably have to jump back but uh you know at the end of these live fire exercises and you're talking a division moving across the desert or two i'm not sure uh, you know, a lot of, lot of munitions, a lot of things blowing up, a lot of variables, you know, if planes dropping bombs. It's a, it really makes you feel like it's the real thing. I mean, it is the real thing in the fact you're using live explosives. It's just you don't have an enemy shooting back unless they're shoot, you know, the, <laughs> unless your friends are shooting at you, which happens quite a bit. But uh, anyway, so let's turn around and get the trail. So we're finishing up and uh, basically we're simulating that the... Uh, Soviets are coming across this valley and uh, they're going to overrun our position. So in preparation uh, we booby-trapped that valley and uh, so what we did is we took uh, big barrels of uh, diesel fuel and uh, to make napalm you know all you do is you just put uh, styrofoam into that diesel fuel and then uh, and then we strapped uh, C4 on the outside of these barrels and uh, I don't remember how many that we put up. But it's quite a few, and uh, and then we retreated back to our position to uh, wait await the enemy's advance, uh, and uh, so here you know here here supposedly they're coming. It was getting getting kind of dark outside. It was getting into the evening, and uh, first the planes came in, and the, you could hear the bombs dropping off in the distance. Of course, they're coming over top of you, you know, in real low, we're flying low. <laughs> You know, and you, whoom, whoom, you know, and then the, uh, of course, the artillery opened up, and uh, that's kind of eerie when they're shooting right over top of you, and you could hear those rounds going down range. And, you know, and so and that and that barrage went on. It was kind of like in in the battle at the Civil War, you know, when when uh, Lee was going to take that hill with Pickett's charge. And they just opened up with those cannons on that position. Probably sounded very similar for, you know, they bombarded that position for a long time. So then finally the artillery ceased fire and then, you know, everybody opened up with the uh, machine guns and your rifles and everything. And then, uh, so finally the, the, the final straw was the trap that we laid. And, uh, you know, fire, fire in the hole, fire in the hole. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And uh, so we, you know, now we're back. A long ways from where we put in that that uh, booby trap, and uh, you know we, I don't know who turned the dial. I don't think it was me, and uh, that that whole valley went up. I mean, if there was anything alive in that valley, it was dead when when that explosion hit because it really looks like a nuclear bomb or a small nuclear device had exploded. I mean, just the the intense bright light 
with also the uh, the heat. I mean, you could just feel the heat all over your, your face, you know, because you, yeah, of course you're going to look at it like an idiot, you know. <laughs> hey, man, we did all that work. Let's see what happens, you know. And uh, and just just a massive fireball. Just if I just can't even like, it just look when you picture a nuclear bomb going off. That's exactly what it looked like. And I just, you know, in my mind, I thought, you know, there by the grace of God go I. I hope to, hope to, you know, prayed for my, for everybody that we never would go to war with the Soviet Union. Because in the end, even with conventional weapons and, and stuff like that, you know, so many people would have died brutally. I mean, because, you know, if, if there had been troops in that valley, they would have been burned and incinerated, you know, in, in a flash by the thousands and uh so it was kind of a, a real awakening you know because so you then you know as a soldier you take war very very seriously i wish our politicians did and uh because then you think man i don't ever want to, to have the real thing you know where that was an enemy in that valley shooting back and or that could have been us you know advancing on on an enemy and they had laid a booby trap for us anyway that was uh so that was kind of like the the final story there i We'll get on to the next story. I got another one in, here in a bit. So, oh, get the get the selfie for the next story. So, you know, here we are. We've been out in the desert for a month. Now, you, you can't imagine what it's like when you haven't had a shower and you've been sweating for weeks and weeks out in the hot desert sun. And, uh, you know, you, everybody smells so bad you don't really notice it. But well, anyway, let's get to the, let's get to the story of getting to the base. So here we are. We're riding along on the Deuce and Hass, and it's a it's a happy moment because we know that the live fire exercise is over, and uh, we're we're heading in, and we can get a hot meal because we've been eating them MREs for forever, and and uh, and also we're going to get a, the main thing was a shower, and uh, you know it's funny because when we got in. It, we didn't even bother. I mean, they, they didn't even want us to wash the clothes. If you should have seen the guys on the base, number one, they were they were scattering when we got off the tracks or the deuce and halves, you know, because they didn't want to be. They could smell us, you know. They they didn't want to be <laughs> anywhere near these dirty ass Marines that, that you know are just disgusting, you know. And uh, so what we what what they had us do was we just they had the, the barrels. They had these barrels, burn barrels, is what they were, and we literally just took our clothes off. And just threw them into the burn barrel. wasn't even, wasn't even any reason to, to wash them. We just burn them right there on the spot. And then, uh, and of course, then we marched over to the showers and, and got our shower. But uh, oh, I, I don't think I told it. Anyway, on the way in, there was this guy jogging, and we were a good 10, 15 miles from the base. And uh, he's out jogging. I mean, it's 100, 110 degrees, ground temperature 140, and this guy's jogging. And uh, I was like, my goodness, what, 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 you know, he was Marine Corps recon. I told you those guys are the best of the best of the best. I mean, they, I put a Marine Corps recon up against a SEAL or a Ranger any day. I mean, these guys are, they're just incredible. And uh, so we said, hey, you know, you, can we give you a ride? No, I'm just enjoying the jog. You know, don't worry about it. Kind of like this guy. So he, uh, they, they just... Uh, we just rolled on past him, and I swear, it wasn't that long before he came running up into the base. So he was cruising along at a good clip in 140 degree temperature, and it didn't even bother him. So getting back to another Marine Corps recon story, um, and I can't remember where we were, but we were, anyway, we, we, we were with, you know, some other Marines. Wasn't anybody in my platoon, but this guy was kind of, uh, we well, might have been an army guy, uh, probably, because he, was, you know, he's real kind of feminine, queer type, you know, in a way. And uh, so this um, this Marine Corps recon, he had found some uh, little uh, 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 nest of mice, and uh, so he was enjoying taking the baby mice out of the hole, and he was squashing them on his boot. You know, take one boot, and he would put that baby mouse on the other boot, and he would just crush. I guess he just wanted to get the blood on his on his boots, make him look more badass, you know. And uh, and this guy goes, you know, he said, hey, you can't, you shouldn't do that. That's wrong. You shouldn't be killing that, you know, things like that. You know, that's nasty. And uh, <laughs> this Marine Corps recon guy, 
he just looked at this this guy and I was I was wondering what was going to happen I'm sitting there going like hmm I don't think I'd be pissing off this recon guy and uh so the recon guy just looked at him and he pulled out one of them baby mice and he bit its head off just like uh, uh remember when um Ozzy Osbourne bit the head off of that bat <laughs> He bit, he bit the head right off of that baby mouse and he spit it right on that guy. <laughs> I, I don't remember exactly what the guy's reaction was, but he was in shock. And, uh, and of course, they, they, they both walked away from each other. But I, that's something I'll never... That's why I said you don't mess with Marine Corps Recon. Those guys are... Not only are they badass, but some of them are half crazy, you know. And if you're going to sit there and squash baby mice on your boots, then... Uh, yeah, it's not quite, uh, quite, quite all there, in my opinion. But uh, that was just uh, another story for you.